Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, August 22nd, 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. Take two, because I just recorded an entire video, 25 minutes on mute. Not a fun feeling when you realize that you just did that, so I get to do it over again. And here we go. State of the market downgraded from uptrend to uptrend with caution after the recent breakout on August 10th failed miserably. Two terrible days of action in the indexes and in leading stocks. Let's get over to the trend gauge here. We can see the updates. Leaders from bullish to neutral. Our leadership list uh, riddled with down three, down four, down five, down six percent days. That's not how you want leading stocks to own, especially after most of them also pulled back on Friday. A couple of our stops hit today. That's how you get out of the market. Stick to your stops. Let the market make the decision for you. Short term, the indexes, the five major indexes versus their 21-day exponential moving average. Four of the five close below or on the 21-day moving average today. So we're still on green there because we need two closes below to make a move. Uh, but uh, the yellow arrow, we're really more on neutral than we are. Of course, I've been wrong before. There have been plenty of times with one close below. I thought, ah, go ahead and move it, and the market thought differently, so I don't ever try to predict. We let the price action dictate. Medium term, the 50-day moving average, we're still firmly above there as we've been extended from it due to the recent run-up and the slope of the line just recently changing. Long term, the 200-day moving average on red, a couple days of closes above the 200 for a few of the indexes last week, but uh, that came to a miserable conclusion today as what just happened. The 810 breakout failed, indexes below the 21. Let's take a look at the, um, the results here. Um, so, uh, G6, our uh, in-house six ETF, six growth ETF composite, down 1.85% on the day, S&P 500 down 2.1, NASDAQ 100 down 2.6, Dow down 1.9, Midcaps down 2.2, Russell down 2.1, Global Diversified 60-40 stock and bond down 1.3, in-house protection down 1.2%, picking up some alpha two of the last three sessions, but uh, still down, but uh, some of the actions that we were able to make and the leading stocks that we are in losing less than the market. It's cold comfort. We hate giving gains back, but it's part of the process. And uh, we'll dive into what our remaining holdings look like as we progress through this. So let's take uh, a look at some charts. We'll bring up the uh, tail of the tape. And first of all, let's talk about why we do what we do here at Revere. This is a daily chart of the S&P 500. We're trend followers. When the trend is up, meaning ideally the indexes are above their short-term green line. That's 21-day exponential moving average. The medium-term 50-day line, that's the red line. And the black 200-day long-term moving average. Uh, you can participate in the market and sleep well. Uh, nothing to be overly concerned about. But when the indexes start rolling over, we take a little bit off the table, let the market take us out. If you really start rolling over and the slope of the line start rolling over, and especially if you get below this black line, the 200-day moving average, this is where all severe bear markets have taken place. Here's the chart that I tuck under my pillow at night to remind me. The last 13 bear markets, the severe ones, meaning more than a 30% loss, on average down 44.5%. You need 80% to get back to even from that. We've got a simple approach. We think it makes a lot of sense, just like you do in every other aspect of your life. When it starts to turn sour, you take action. Well, we recognize when the markets get below the 200-day moving average that it's time to take serious action. Uh, on average, when you a pullback starts, it starts from about 12% above this black line. Uh, but when you get to the bear markets or the severe bear markets, that's always 
happens when you're below the black line. Doesn't mean you're going to get under it. You might stay under it for a week or two. You can get right back in the market. Uh, but when you start trending lower, you're very happy to be out of the market as it goes lower. We avoided pretty much all of this. Uh, then we start coming back up. We get back above the short and medium term moving averages. We start putting capital back to work. We just made some decent moves up off of it ran into what the dreaded black line the 200 day moving average and that's as far as we went this momentum indicator is called a stochastic up here it rolled over that's telling us it's time to get defensive again uh, our leading stocks price action coincided with that we started taking ourselves out of the market cut our risk in half over the last three days and then unfortunately today we had a break below and a close below the 21 day exponential moving average now if you are interested and sleeping well at night and not having to worry about severe pullbacks in the market, give me a shout. Email me, DonnaRiveraAsset.com, or you can phone 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. So that's what happened on the S&P 500. Let's look at the rest of the indexes very quickly. NASDAQ 100, same situation, stochastic rollover, close below the 21. Dow Jones Industrial Average right down sitting basically on the 21 day moving average after a failure above the 200 day last week. I mean, late, as late as Thursday of last week, I was still feeling pretty good about the market. We had a nice little tight inside day, looked like we were ready for a run higher, but uh, Friday gap down and another gap down today. And you can't argue with the market because all you do is get paid uh, on price. So uh, index is rolling over. Uh, certainly not ideal. It's, it happens. You protect your capital when it happens because you never know how far down it's going to go. But we do know when we're below this black line that uh, risk is at the highest it possibly can be in the market. Just below the 21-day moving average on the mid-cap index, again, the stochastic rollover, and finally, small caps. A uh, couple closes above the 21 last week, back below it, two gaps down below the 21. None of this is good news, folks. So a uh, bunch more of our stops uh, got hit today. We increased our hedge and, as I said, lost less uh, as a result of it. But um, we're ready either way if, we, if the rally resumes. But right now it's an uptrend with extreme caution after two gaps down and heavy selling and uh, breaks in the leadership. So bull case we're, is uh, hanging on. It's on life support. Uh, the bear case first closed below the 21 today on 822. So uh, three weeks of a nice move above the 21 came to an end today. Plenty of times I've seen, I thought, as I said, that one close was going to be uh, the last nail in the coffin and the market writes itself. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. A little bit of news. Wall Street Journal reported that Buffett is not expected to buy Oxy, although he got approval to buy up to 50% of it. And then uh, looking forward to Friday, Jerome Powell has a major economic speech at this Jackson Hole. Uh, and it's funny, just hole, not a hole. Uh, conference, uh, economic conference. And um, the market's looking ahead to that, but there's really not a lot of uh, economic news before then that could. Uh, prop the market up. So we'll just have to see if bulls uh, who look like they fumbled the ball and it was recovered by the uh, bears today. Maybe we'll have to go to instant replay to overturn the fumble. We'll see tomorrow. So big problem, UUP at a five-week high. Let's take the stochastics off here uh, as we get through the tail of the tape. Blow the charts up a little bit. So UUP, this is the US dollar when it's going higher. Uh, it's bad for stocks when it's going lower. It's good for stocks. Note how it's been trending higher while stocks have been in a bear market all throughout this year. Now pulled back. We rallied a few weeks ago, but that stopped late last week. Trending higher again. We're at the top of the range. Will this break out? Will it pull back? Uh, that remains to be seen. But for now, the negative correlation between the dollar and the market indexes and stocks definitely is happening. Uh, this McClellan summation hood index uh, did hook down from overbought. That's another headwind. And as I said, the five major averages, I showed the stochastic how it has broken down also. So expectations coming into today were neutral after uh, the bad day on Friday uh, and they got worse. Bad breakdown today. Expectations really going from neutral to bearish now. 
uh, on our support and resistance on the indexes, all the supports were broken, both on the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Coming into today, a couple names we were looking at, XOM, we did end up buying that today. Uh, EQT, and uh, Michael did a great deep dive on uh, the nat gas sector uh, from beginning to end on the podcast on Friday. If you haven't read that, definitely if you haven't read it, if you haven't watched that or listened to it, definitely do that. Uh, and TBT, TBT goes up when the indexes go down. That had a breakout on Friday, followed through to the upside today. So that's something we're keeping an eye on also. So the action, the gap down trended lower. Uh, let's take a look at the intraday. And really it was just uh, a trend day down in the S&P 500. Here's the opening. When you make your high in the first five minutes of the day, that's not a good day. Down, base, down, base, uh, basically a trend down day, breaking below the 21. And also look at these levels of support that were broken today. Uh, we closed right on top of this big level, 42.28 to 32 on Friday, broken. The declining 150-day moving average, broken. The COVID rally pullback and 23% uh, Fibonacci level from the rally at 4,200, broken. The 810 breakout, broken. Uh, the flat 21-day, now flat 21-day exponential moving average, broken. Five levels of support broken in one day, nothing held went through it just consistently little by little trickling down very much uh, bearish bottom line for today uh, the 810 breakout fails indexes with the first close below the 21 uh, sectors not a lot to look at nat gas was strong uh, oils went from negative to positive to mixed by the end of the day biotech started strong uh, and ended up uh, red. Let's take a look at that as that had been a recent leading index, but um, this negative reversal was a uh, heads up of some things to come as we had quite a few down days strung together, and that's just screaming risk off. Uh, biotech is one of the most uh, risk on sectors that you can see. 11 out of 11 sectors finished red today. Socks bad. Semiconductors, two of our semi stops. Uh, got hit today. You can see the gap down below the 21 close near the lows of the day. Same situation with software. Uh, and when the NASDAQ 100 and the, and the SOX and software are negative, you're not going to make any progress on the major indexes because of those he heavy weightings and all those big cap stocks. Retail, all the rage after Walmart last week, negative reversal broke below the 21. So any pockets of strength have kind of disappeared. Talking about the portfolio, as I said, uh, we reduced our exposure. We were at 1.4 at the end of day Thursday, down to 0.74. So two days, our risk cut in half as our stops got hit. The market takes us out, and we added to our hedges. Uh, basically, we still have our 20% SSO position, but it's totally hedged by the 20% SDS position. Uh, it's like a seesaw. Whichever one, uh, one of them will win right now. And it's possible we turn around, and go right back up. We can lock in a small gain on our SDS. If we go down lower, we'll sell our SSO and the hedge will turn into a directional play. It's a big move down to the 50 day moving average without a lot of support as we're 4.4% uh, above the 50 day moving average. Um, so as I said, we added to, uh, doubled up our SDS hedge today. We trimmed ON. Locked in some gains on uh, part of the position. We have a small piece of it left. It is holding up pretty well, uh, and it is one of the leaders. We did get stopped on MPWR, our remaining uh, small piece of that today as our stops were hit. If I could type MPWR, uh, broke below the 21, so we're stopped out on that. And also GFS, stopped out on the last piece of that too. 60 was our drop dead spot for that. Uh, let's see what else, uh, bought Exxon, here's XOM, uh, oils strong before gapped, uh, before the, uh, market looked like they were going to gap up. Then they got some oil news that came out. There's been a lot of OPEC chatter coming out. So we pulled back, uh, tapped the 21 day EMA, some, more, some good OPEC news came out. We had a reversal close near the high of the day. This is a great low risk setup. So we took that today. And then, as I said, uh, we doubled up our SDS position today. So what's left in the portfolio? Uh, we still have Apple. 
Apple, uh, the 21 day is above our cost basis, so we're going to give it to the 21. Um, we still have LNTH acting extremely well, nice and tight, low volume pullback here above the 21, profits in that. Uh, SWAV, strongest stock in the market, uh, five days up, two days down, another couple days up, consolidating that. Outside negative reversal today, but the volume was light, and this is really the market dragging it down, but it is one of the strongest stocks in the market. Uh, BJ's, we bought this last week on the gap up, on Thursday, uh, did break below the low of the gap, very close to our stop. It did fill the gap, so our stop is just below there. We'll see how that, uh, if that can hold on tomorrow. If not, we've got a 2% size on it. Our first buy is usually one5 to 3%, depending on the volatility. And then we double it up if we get uh, between a quarter and a half ATR of profits. And if we never get that, then we just get stopped out on that small position. Uh, for a minimal loss, and the loss is usually less than 0.1% uh, of the portfolio on that first half buy. Uh, let's see what else we're still holding on to. End phase, gap down, uh, but was kind of strong all day. Bounced, undercut, and reclaimed the 21-day exponential moving average. So relatively strong is what I should say. I talked about us uh, selling half of ON, Wolf, we're still holding on to this. We've done three buys on this, slightly negative on them now. Uh, not going to give this much more room, but it, it was green at one point this morning when the market was deeply red. So it's very clearly that it's a pretty popular stock uh, and money is flowing into it. But whether or not the market will, uh, the specter of the, a weak market is what could uh, sound the death knell for it. LNG, uh, negative reversal today, very strong. This looks a little bit like an evening star pattern, which is a reversal pattern. We're keeping a tight watch on this. We've got three buys on this, and we've got uh, profits in all three of them, so we'll lock those in uh, if things get worse. But uh, that's the story on stocks. That's the story on the indexes, and that is going to wrap it. So as always, like to hear from you. You can email me, Don at RevereAsset.com. You can phone 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. Remember in the market, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Uh, we get defensive when the market turns against us. We're with the market making gains when the market is in our favor, but we've got uh, an if-then-else plan for every scenario. And if you're interested in this approach, give us a shout. So wrapping up Monday, uh, August 22nd for the second time, this time with audio. This is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.